Hi everyone, it's Ms. Goldman, and we are here for our 11th lesson of Eureka, Module 7. As you know, we've been starting to do things with shapes. We've used tangrams, and we've made tessellations now, so we're going to continue with all this fun shape with these lessons, and let's get started. And please remember, if you are printing out these lessons because it's easier to do them on paper, uh, to make sure you are sending me pictures of the work that you are doing to get credit for it. You can do that through Google Classroom, Class Dojo, email. And remember, if I'm going too fast, just press pause. I know when we're working with shapes, sometimes you want to draw them out or cut them and figure out how to use the puzzle pieces. So take your time. And now let's get started. So what we're going to do is well what we're gonna do is use the picture that you made yesterday so some of you may not remember um but yesterday's lesson we took a shape from a square we cut out part of it and then we um cut that part that we cut out we then taped it to the opposite side so what you're gonna do is take that puzzle piece that you made because it actually is a puzzle believe it or not and you are going to trace it then you're going to pick it up and try to make it fit like a puzzle so from one side to the opposite side fit, uh, connect them so you're going to create a tessel make a tessellation on your paper so yesterday we learned how to make the tessellate which is your little puzzle piece so hopefully you still have it and you're going to trace it and then make another one. Trace it, then make another one. The same thing the whole time. So you're going to then color your picture that you made and then outline the perimeter of your tessellation with a highlighter. It could also be a different, whatever color you have. Then if you have a string or a cord, use that to measure the perimeter. Remember, that's the border. Once you're done, Maybe what you could do is have a parent or a friend or, well, not really a friend right now, a parent or a cousin or a sibling or whoever you're with right now, if they create one too, I want you to compare your tessellations to theirs. I know this one uh, lesson, it has a lot to do with working with a partner. If there's someone you can't work with right now, you can send me a message saying, Ms. Goldman, can I use yours? And I'll do yours and you can use mine. So I know right now for this one, because you're trace, doing a lot of tracing. So for example, let's say your puzzle piece looked like this. Sorry. Let's try it again. So that was your puzzle piece, and your next puzzle piece, once you draw it in, it would again look like this. As you can tell, because I'm doing it on a computer, it's not perfect. But it would keep coming out looking like. As you can tell, I'm doing it quickly on a computer and not actually tracing shape because they're not perfectly the same. So let's move on. So as you can see, I drew one out and I put my picture right here. I colored it, I traced it. You can see I colored it, I outlined it with another color. But to make it easier, I'll show you again with yellow right here. Hopefully you can see it. I know doing it this way is not the best. But you can see I'm kind of using a string. or And then I would also be using a string to measure this. And then you're going to compare. I had no one to compare with. Hopefully um, I'll be able to compare with you. So let's keep going.
So now, how could you increase the perimeter? Well, one of the ways I could increase the perimeter, you tell me, at least one way. Sorry about the beeping. And remember, perimeter is your border. The outside. All right, we're going to go over the answer now. So I said I could increase the perimeter of my tessellation by tessellating more shapes. If I tessellate another row of shapes, that would increase the number. So right, if you add more to your picture, make it bigger, the perimeter gets bigger. Let's keep going. So now, how would overlapping your shape when, the tessellate, when te you tessellated change the perimeter of your picture? So that would be, remember, if you drew one picture and then it didn't come out great, so you kind of drew over it. So how would that change the perimeter? All right, I'm going to go over the answer now. If you need more time, just press pause. So you can see I wrote, if I had overlapped, the shapes would not fit together. And if I had overlapped with the same number of tessellated shapes, the perimeter would also decrease because if they're kind of squished now and overlapping, not only are they not fitting right, like a puzzle, but your shape is smaller than it normally would be. So I... Um, Skipped one lesson because it involves you comparing um, yours with another person again. And I know that's a little hard to do since we're doing distance learning. So just do your best with this. And I will see you hopefully tomorrow at 11 o'clock for our math lesson because I miss seeing your face and hearing from you. And if you need any help, just let me know if you need a partner because you don't have someone to do, help you with this activity at home. Let me know. I'd be happy to help you with it and be your partner. I can actually send you a picture of mine, too, so it's not so little in this video. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Again, be safe, be smart, go for the gold. Bye.